Hello everyone and welcome. Today we're going to talk about the pathophysiology of stroke. Now the brain is an organ that needs a constant supply of oxygen, as only 5 minutes of hypoxia already leads to irreversible neuronal injury. And uh, the brain will get this oxygen through the arterial blood supply, and if anything happens that disrupts that supply of blood to the brain, you usually have a stroke. So, a stroke may be defined as a sudden focal neurological deficit due to a vascular lesion lasting longer than 24 hours. Now, four out of five times, uh, a stroke will be due to infarction, uh, which is the death of tissue due to obstruction of the blood supply to that tissue. And one out of five times will be due to bleeding or hemorrhage. So here we have the two types of stroke. On the left, an ischemic stroke, and on the right, a hemorrhagic stroke. So an ischemic stroke is due to an occlusion in a blood vessel, um, and this will lead to neuronal cell death and consequent liquefactive necrosis in the brain. And a hemorrhagic stroke, as we can see in this image, is due to a ruptured blood vessel that will start bleeding into the cranial cavity and this will exert a lot of pressure in, in the brain cells, um, and so they will die. Now let's talk about ischemic stroke. So this is the most common type of stroke, and uh, it is characterized by a, an acute blockage of vessels, leading to infarction and consequent liquefactive necrosis. So as we can see here in this image, there is a, a blood clot that is not letting blood uh, flow from uh, this area all the way to the brain and so if the brain doesn't receive uh, blood it is not receiving oxygen it is not receiving nutrients and so um, you're gonna have cell death uh, an ischemic stroke is divided into three subtypes so you may have a thrombotic stroke which is when a blood clot forms right on the site of infarction or you can have an embolic stroke so an embolus from another side of the body uh, obstructs a vessel in the brain. An example of that is with a patient with atrial fibrillation uh, where you're going to have the formation of blood clots in the atria and uh, this will be pumped uh, to the brain via the carotids and so you have a stroke. Or it could be a hypoxic stroke which is due to hypoperfusion of the brain or hypoxemia which means low levels of oxygen in the blood. Now, a hemorrhagic stroke, on the other hand, is when an artery in the brain ruptures and blood starts putting a lot of pressure on the brain cells and also disrupts the adequate supply of blood, uh, leading to cell death. So here we have an image of a hemorrhagic stroke, and here in a, a CT scan of it. And uh, hemorrhagic strokes may be divided into intracerebral hemorrhage, which is where bleeding occurs from a broken vessel within the brain itself, or into subarachnoid hemorrhage, uh, which is when blood accumulates at the surface of the brain, so between the brain and the skull, and this blood mixes with CSF, uh, that's cerebrospinal fluid, which also runs in the subarachnoid space. And as blood uh, pours into the CSF, there is a gradual increase in pressure. Now, the cause of subarachnoid hemorrhage, the most common cause of it, is usually uh, an aneurysm that will rupture. Now, we also have transient ischemic attacks, which are also known as mini strokes, and these are brief, sudden focal neurological deficits lasting less than 24 hours. So, this is key here. Um, the majority of these will resolve in less than 15 minutes, though, without irreversible damage. So let's say here we have this blood clot uh, impeding blood flow to the brain, uh, but for some reason this blood clot uh, breaks and after a few seconds or even one or two minutes uh, allows blood to go to the brain again. So this will not lead to an irreversible brain damage, however it will cause the symptoms of a stroke. So these are a warning sign of a future stroke. And there is no way of distinguishing between a TIA and a stroke at presentation. So patients might present the same symptoms, but you won't know if this is going to be something that will 
resolve in the less uh, in less than 15 minutes or if it will be something that will lead to permanent brain damage or even death. So um, stroke is a medical emergency and if you see someone with symptoms of stroke um, call an ambulance and go to the hospital. Now the signs and symptoms of stroke can be quite varied depending on, on where in the brain is being damaged. However according to the NHS the main signs of stroke can be remembered by the FAST acronym. So F stands for face, uh, you're usually going to see a facial droop on one side, uh, so where the person is not able to smile or properly open their eyes. Here is a, in this image it shows here a right-sided facial droop. A stands for arms, uh, where the patient may not be able to lift both arms and keep them there due to weakness or numbness in one arm. S is for speech, uh, so the person's speech uh, may be slurred or mumbled or may not be, the person may not be able to talk at all. There may also be problems understanding what you're saying to them. And then T stands for time, which is time to call an ambulance, as this is a medical emergency. So apart from the FAST acronym, some strokes may present as a complete paralysis of one side of the body, uh, a sudden loss or blurring of vision, uh, dizziness, confusion, difficulty understanding what others are saying, problems with balance and coordination, difficulty swallowing, uh, also known as dysphagia, uh, severe headache, and loss of consciousness. Now it goes without saying that if you're feeling a bit dizzy um, doesn't mean that you're having a stroke but this is just one of the signs and symptoms that someone having a stroke may present with. Now uh, the treatments for an ischemic stroke. So uh, usually patients are given autoplase which is also known as TPA or tissue plasminogen activator. This is a thrombolytic drug and it will dissolve the blood clot uh, that is causing the ischemic stroke. This must be given as soon as a diagnosis of ischemic stroke is made. And so the patient must undergo a brain scan to confirm that it is an ischemic stroke and not a hemorrhagic stroke, as it can make the bleeding uh, much worse in hemorrhagic strokes. Also, we have a thrombectomy. Uh, this is uh, a small number of severe ischemic strokes that can be treated uh, by a thrombectomy, which is an emergency procedure. Uh, thrombectomy is only effective at treating ischemic strokes caused by a blood clot in a large artery in the brain. So, the procedure involves inserting a catheter into an artery, often in the groin, and a small device is passed through the catheter into the artery in the brain. The blood clot can then be removed using the device or through suction. And so here we have uh, an image uh, demonstrating this procedure where we have a blood clot here, impeding blood flow, and it can be manually removed uh, through a thrombectomy. Now, uh, patients who have an ischemic stroke are also uh, going to receive medications uh, for the prevention of future strokes. So this includes aspirin, as it uh, may work as a blood thinner. Uh, also anticoagulants, specifically uh, with patients that have atrial fibrillation or a previous history of DVTs, for example. Also statins to lower cholesterol and antihypertensives to decrease blood pressure. Now, in terms of treating hemorrhagic strokes, um, if the area of bleeding is large, surgery may be needed to remove the blood and relieve pressure in the brain or to repair any ruptured blood vessels. This is usually done through a craniotomy, which is when a section of the skull is removed to allow access to the brain. And we can see this in the following image. Um, now, in the presence of an aneurysm, surgical clipping may take place. This is when a clamp is placed at the base of an aneurysm to stop blood flow to it, and this will prevent the aneurysm from bursting or stop it from bleeding again. And uh, patients may also receive antihypertensive medications, uh, such as ACE inhibitors, as high blood pressure is the main cause or the main risk factor for hemorrhagic strokes. 
Now we'll have some questions uh, to make sure that you've understood. Um, feel free to pause the, the video to think of your answers. What is the definition of a stroke? Which is the most common type of stroke? which is not a subtype of ischemic stroke. What does A stand for in the FAST acronym? What is the mode of action of autoplays? Thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe for more.